please put down our questions to the facilitators and we will get the reply at the uh, Triple D, who is very ready and he has been with us here. This, this gentleman has been here for three days, today is the third day, waiting to have this time to give us this knowledge that he has prepared. And uh, I wish that uh, maybe in, uh, in at the appropriate time or we will organize for another meeting and then also call you to at least also uh, the time and, 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 and apologize in any case we have inconvenienced you uh, uh, on behalf of the session. Good afternoon everyone. I want to honor the sitting and uh, like I said, that is my name. I want to come from this angle of improving performance of better known urban council speakers and local government leaders who could be here today and also the clerks to council. Um, about me, I am a very married man, but of course after eight hearty breaks, the story is for another day. So I know what it means to go through hearty breaks and then you don't give up. Of course, the eight are with us, without those who find me in the post, and then those who told me they will give me answer, and they have to, up to now, even up to tomorrow, there's no answer. Those who are not part of the eight. I've written these books, uh, but for today's purpose, I'm not interested in talking about them, because I want to run through what uh, I want to do today. I'm also an award winning mental health advocate, uh, uh, I'm behind the voice of restoration, and We've been engaging in schools, in communities, training religious leaders, training community leaders, uh, training local leaders on issues of mental health, because mental health is the core of our existence. And many times we do not understand what mental health is. Sometimes when we say mental health, many people think we're talking about the mad people. But mental health is not about madness. Mental health is about mental well-being that enables me and you to be able to work well, to learn well, to manage our stress, to realize our potential, and to also to be able to contribute to the community. That's mental health. I want us to dialogue a bit. What are the challenges, what are the problems affecting performance of council speakers and local government leaders? I know I have uh, around 30 minutes, so I want to uh, summarize it up. But one thing I want to say is I know if I'm to dialogue with this, if I'm to open up this dialogue, we can even have the whole day discussing the problems, because there are many. However, one thing I want to say is this council member cannot perform, whether you like it or yes. If that is the speaker, if that is a clerk to council, if that is our mayor, if that is our chairman, chairman this person cannot perform, whether you like it or yes. And I think in one way or the other, this has been our problem. And we're shy to discuss these issues. But uh, when I go to know about this, I said, um, it's not a, a big deal for me to come and share my thoughts with you, fellow Ugandans, so that we're able to improve our performance. Mm. Because there's no way you can improve performance when you're on this corner. Because this corner is an other speakers. <laughs> Many of us will be in a place where we cannot wait to resign, and then we don't act with many of us are now telling that we're not coming back because of the heat. <laughs> But what is the problem there? Poor health. In as much as we might be uh, focusing on uh, uh, the uh, uh, lack of facilitation, maybe the problem that we're having, but individually, if the speaker has a poor health condition, you cannot expect much from the speaker. You can't expect a lot when the things are falling apart. Number two, somebody was saying if a, if a, a council member has maybe a problem and then they have come to the chairperson, oh, as long as the family is falling apart, friends, nothing will move. Yeah. 
And just imagine you are coming for the council meeting at 9 a.m. And then that evening, Madame did not give you something that is dear to you. Even chairing the meeting will be tough. You will be remembering the fight in the night. <laughs> Emotional problems. That's why some people even nowadays they say, don't joke with me because I'm short tempered. They are even now celebrating their, their emotional uh, struggles. Mental problems, we will look at this in detail. Spiritual problems, that's why many of us we have spiritual attacks. Rejections, you felt you were once loved but all of a sudden now you feel that actually things are not working the way they should. Negative mindset. Because even right now, there are people who believe that nothing good can come from wherever you have, you have come from. Because of the negative mindset. Poor attitude. How this government thinks. You see, I should have done, but now you see there's even no facilitation. That's why actual chairman, some have not come here because they believe that they should have been facilitated. And because maybe they were not facilitated the way they should have, they, they said they are not coming. I'm sure that's why others are not here. Attitude. And what does all of this bring? It brings ineffectiveness in our work. Even when we are talking about our roles, even when we are talking about how we are supposed to operate, but as long as this person is the speaker, <laughs> forget. As long as this is the... <laughs> Leader, nothing is going on. That person will be an NGO, nothing going on. And how does this person behave in the community? And how does this person even behave in the castle hall? How does this person even operate? One, this person will be good in unforgiveness. That's why I'm very convinced, Chairman, some of the people who are listening to me right now, they have even told themselves and even others that they will never forgive some people unless they come to apologize. Even in uh, our place, in our rua, that's why women begin to abuse the legs of chicken when the target is a man or oh, another person. Number two, anger and bitterness. Someone was talking about when the council hall becomes very hot. By the time somebody is thinking of exchanging blows, there is a lot of anger and bitterness. That is boiling. And many times we struggle with these issues. And this bitterness breaks relationships in our families, it breaks even relationships at your place of work, even in your own businesses. And above all, the business in the house. <laughs> Number three, domestic violence. You know, when you talk about domestic violence, sometimes now because you are the speaker, you fear physical attack. attack. But when there is some <coughs> level of violence happening. Because when you talk about violence, I'm not talking just... I know there is where there is physical violence. However, what makes you more wounded that I want to... Uh, why I've come here is the verbal assault. The verbal threats. In fact, sometimes what makes you angry, even sometimes what makes you cry, is because of the verbal assault. Coming to chair the meeting, and one eye is closed, and then the cheek is swollen. <laughs> because at night there was some physical violence. It is hard, you cannot come. That's why sometimes we postpone our council sittings. Somehow I think because of some of these issues. Jealousy takes over, and I will always say this until I'm still alive. I'm not still alive, I'll keep reminding myself and everybody that jealousy is the last class you attend before you become a full time witch. You can't be jealous of me and you wish me well. You can't be jealous of him and you wish him well. In fact, there's a lot of jealousy and envy in our settings, and it's coming from that place of our pain. Because now we are transferring things. Greed takes over. Greed 
is the excessive desire to acquire possession and the power. And all of us, we want power. We want to have. And what does that bring? It brings, it destroys, because there is no, uh, there comes greed for money, greed for power, and greed for sex. <laughs> I explain. <laughs> the women who are here can testify. But your husbands are good ones. <laughs> but the other husbands who are out there, apart, um, apart from chairman, apart from these men who are here, those other men out the other side who are, who are not come, the men of them they rape their wives because of greed for sex. When you begin to hear, uh, you don't hear noise, but just you hear at night, it is likely that fight is when the man is naked and the woman is in her bed. So it is very hard to go and separate that kind of a fight. And imagine it is the speaker struggling with this. <laughs> all of us are greedy, by the way, all of us, all of us are greedy. If you want to know, let's have, we are going for lunch after here. Let's see how we are going to serve chicken, whether you remind me of those who are behind you. <laughs> when there is the neck, there is the thigh, and there is the chest, and you are the one on the line, I'm not sure if you will pick the, the neck, like me, because also I want the test. <laughs> all of us are greedy. And that greed is coming from that place. Now we have a homicide, social and murder. I think this is self-explanatory. That's why I'm not ashamed to say this, friends. When we see cases of homicide, when we see cases of suicide, when we see cases of murder, it is obvious. Poor health. I want to ask this honest question, I want to answer it. How is your health? Could you have lost or gained weight? Don't answer it. No. <laughs> you could begin to say, maybe, I think somebody has done something. <laughs> Headache, one, head is, one side of the head is aching, one side is fine. And then we begin to say, I think so and so is bewitching. <laughs> Yet it is not supposed to be. That is because of stress. And do you know that because of stress, Chairman? Because of stress. Most men have not. Uh, most men are humble <laughs> because of stress. This man has not behaved. He's a very humble man. <laughs> Chest pains, back pains, everybody pains, and whatever pains. I get to go to the hospital. They test. They say that you are you are fine, but you are struggling. In fact, you are struggling is not because of your physical body pains. It is a mental. Mm. Many of us, we don't remember when even we last smiled. <laughs> Though on our posters, we normally put our faces when we are smiling. <laughs> but after that picture, it takes another year. Sometimes even some of us who are going to contest again will use the same photo of last season. <laughs> but you cannot remember when you last smiled. Because of depression. What is depression? Depression is a sadness that does not go away from you, and it begins to affect your daily activities. That's why some people, even now, because of depression, it becomes hard for them, they don't uh, remember when the last one uh, went to the bathroom to bed. I'm sure you've seen uh, even some council members, honorable members, who show up and you wonder whether they're coming from home. <laughs> but coming from home. Personal hygiene is low, not even there. We don't sleep, even when you are tired, you can't sleep. Sometimes now some of us now say for us to sleep, we must take something. Mm. Yes. <laughs> if we don't take it, we don't sleep. <laughs> and then before you realize it, in fact, you become alcoholic. Because then you cannot do without it. Mm. And even it affects your performance even more. Mm. And for those who are very Christian, who will not now go for the other thing to take so that they can sleep, they silently go to the pharmacy to buy sleeping pills. Please, I want to say this. Don't self medicate yourself with sleeping pills. Okay. Seek out for help. Many of us are stuck in unhealthy relationships. Honestly, how is your relationship? Look at that picture and see if you relate or you don't relate. As a matter of fact, 
in, mon in many families now, marriages are in the intensive care unit. <laughs> We're not sure whether the marriage is still alive or it is dead. We're not sure. But at least we are still under the same roof. But almost nothing happened. Each one on him, him himself, each one for himself, God for us all. But how is your partner not with their spouse? Many of us will get into an unhealthy relationship. And even there are those who just have a relationship just for just. Just. One for the road. Just. But it's unhealthy. And it is very traumatic. I think that is self explanatory. I can't go there. We can see for ourselves. In fact, in Uganda, we no longer have sugar daddies, we have sugar ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> if you can see my user here, enjoying himself. <coughs> That cannot be a sugar daddy now, that is a, a sugar judge. You know? And sometimes we even get caught up and we get involved in this. Drug abuse is not only for the young people, by the way. And be, besides, nobody knows the father of a dog, but we know the mother of a, of, of a dog, right? <laughs> a puppy learns to sit from the parents. If you have ever smoked and you left uh, that piece, your kid runs to pick that leftover. Mm. And sometimes we're the ones who even send them to bring the fire. Sometimes we're the ones who send them to bring these things. So they're also using it. And some of us, we think that we have now improved it. When we enter here, some of us don't want to leave. Forest of bottles. Some of us who don't, don't want to leave. Assorted. Assorted. <coughs> I think we are talking. <laughs> because some of us have gotten to a place where we are even now addicted to this. <laughs> no, it's not the one. <laughs> some of us even improved this one one. Now this one makes it worse from my region. <laughs> and all of these things affect our performance. By the way, we struggle with this with this, all these issues. And many of us are not living our authentic nature. We are not living ourselves. We are living to please other people around us. We are constantly trying to live to please other people. And then you are not yourself, that's why you are burning out. You are struggling because you are trying to seek for approval, you are trying to seek for love, you are trying to seek for approval from our man, our man, no change. That's what we want now to hear people say, our man, no change. And because of this, you are doing everything possible to break. That's why <coughs> even you are here and you receive everything that there is a battle tomorrow, you will want to be there. Uh, members, uh, I have a complication from the treasurer, and uh, I think I have been your own purposes. It is not the right thing. Just see where you're seated, see the place you are in. You know that this place needs to be paid for. Whatever we are having here needs to be paid for. And as a chairperson, I don't have any other additional source to cater for this. And I'm requesting, my work is only to give leadership. And this is exactly what I'm doing. So do your part to support the association. A true life. We are living according to the expectations of other people. And it's actually breaking us. I was saying this, and I was uh, in one place where I was uh, advocating for women. <laughs> and I was saying, I think our cultural practices need to change. And can only change when we have mindset change. Why? 
If there is any look for a woman who is here and she is married, her marriage is only approved by the in-laws. And on the recommendation that she must do what they expect of her, that can make her to be a wife. Why am I here today then? To see that we move from left to right. That's why even all of you who are married now, when you are planning to get married, you wanted to marry Mr. or Mrs. Right. Nobody wanted to marry Mr. or Mrs. Left. As you can see where Mr. Right is, you see where Mr. Left is. <laughs> so my hope is that we will be able to move from a place of pain to a place where we can really be ourselves, we can be in a good health, we can be in a, a very good mental health state, we can be in a sober place, so that we are able to uh, do what we are called to do, and we are able to be of service to this great nation, Uganda. That's why I'm here. That's why we are called Voice of Restoration. We want to see how we can together move from left to right, and it's possible. We can actually move there. How do we move that? How do we move? Number one, my recommendation for each one of us, know and understand your roles. Know and understand your role as a speaker, understand your role as a clerk to counsel, understand your role so that you don't do what is not in your jurisdiction. No, and you do your work. Number two, need to heal. We must heal. You cannot operate from that place of left. You can't. You must heal. And healing begins from a place of accepting that I need to get healing. I need help. None of us are living in denial. Even me too, I was living in... I, I lived for a full month without bedding, and I was living in denial. Saying I was okay, but I was not okay. I don't know how many times you bed in a, in a day. But that was me, some years back. <laughs> yes, a full month, no bedding. Uh, but I was working. <laughs> when you go through depression, when you are, you are going through mental breakdown, some things that are, are normal become abnormal to you. That's why, let me just throw this. Are there people here, right now you have problem with your appetite? Are you here right now you have problem with sleep? Yes. Are you here you have problem with the anger and you don't even know why you are angry? Are you here you are living in, you are in a place where you want to stay alone, don't want people? Are you in a place where you have unexplained pain? Are you in a place where you have lost interest in life, including sex? You have lost interest? I don't, I don't mention it. <laughs> are you in a place where, where, where life is seemingly, life is useless? Are you in a place where right now you feel nothing good can come from you? You're not good enough? Are you in a place where sometimes you have your own meeting with yourself? You ask your question and then you answer it to yourself. <laughs> if it is funny, you laugh at it. Are you in a place where sometimes you hear voices others don't hear? Are you in a place where sometimes you see things others don't see? Are you in a place where sometimes you don't even concentrate on your work because you are restless? All those are signs and symptoms of mental illness. We need to heal. We need help. And you want to get mental health treatment from the shrine. Every health center for has a mental health unit. Go there and examine yourself. I know there is a stigma to that. That's why last year I did the paper during the mental health conference on the impact of stigma in accessing mental health services. Because somebody will say, how, how can I show up there to seek for help? What will people say? And besides, our policies don't even allow that. Because our policies are, in fact, I talked about the five facets of stigma. Number one is self-perceived stigma. What will people think? What will people think about me? How can I go for help? Number two, societal stigma. Because the society sees anyone with a mental, when they say mental ill, the society has a negative mind to look at that kind of person. Number three, 
health practitioner stigma. This is where the stigma, uh, the stereotype, the naming is coming from the health service provider. Number four is what we call um, associative stigma. If you have any member in your family with a mental health problem or is mental ill, when the visitors come around, you will likely hide this person away from the visitors. That's because of the association you have with this person. Because they will be like a shame. The last one is organizational or structural stigma. If you are here and you are on health insurance, let me start here and say before I said it over and over and over again, and I'm, to, I'm still advocating for it. No insurance company will come and insure your mental health. But they will insure your teeth, your nose. Yet there is no health without mental health. Because it is something to do with the policies. Number two, in our policies, in some structures, if somebody has a mental health problem and is identified, they are fired from work. Or they are relieved of their duties. Because of that, people now fear coming out to declare their mental health state. Even the local government acts. Even the local government. You can be removed from office because of your mental health. Instead of getting free treatment, you are fired. Which actually even triggers more because this is where your livelihood is. Yeah. So we are trying to advocate for those issues. In fact, one of the things that you pray for me, because for us to change this, we must change the policies and the policy makers and implementers and the parliamentarians. We must address these issues. You cannot fire me because of my mental but you have to treat me. Treatment is there. People have to recover from mental illnesses. I'm one of them, if you didn't know. Talking from lived experience. All of us who can heal, we can change our lives. After I came to realize that my eight heartbreaks was because I think of my mental health state. Because I was at some point very rude to the young girls. So who wants to be near an arrogant man? No one. Hope we are learning. <laughs> Seek for help from professionals. Please, I want to say this. One thing I know is most politicians are struggling with mental breakdowns. Seek for help. And this help is not in the shrine. This help is from the professionals. I want to just throw something here for us. If I run from here, can it appear for, for all of us? No. But for her, she wanted to see it. I think it's better if it's coming in the middle. <clears throat> now, I want to remind us here. Please, you need help. All of us need help. No one is a champion in this. I want to remind you even just had a mental breakdown. He even asked for help. That's why he came to his friend and said, please pray for me. <laughs> but the men were not praying, they were sleeping. <laughs> he came and woke them and said, please, can't you just pray for one hour? The guys kept sleeping, he kept snoring. But still he had to ask for help. I know we struggle with all these crises, all these issues we struggle with. It is only you who knows how much money you have. And it is only you who knows you are network in terms of your loans and the debts and your income. It's not you who knows. And it's only you who knows what it gives you sleepless nights. All those issues affect us. All those issues. Finances, family, relationship. All those issues. But this is what I want to say. When it comes to help, seek for help, why? Mental illness is mostly not is mostly caused by the environment. A few percentages of the issues are to do with uh, developmental neurological issues in the body. That's why we have autism and uh, maybe epilepsy and all that. But apart from those issues of depression, issues of anxiety disorders, post-traumatic stress disorders, stress disorders, bipolar, depression, all of these are from environmental issues. We go through crisis, right? All of us. That's why what makes you cry 
It's not something to do with your pain on the body sometimes. It is something in your soul. <laughs> something in your soul makes you cry. And it's what is in your soul that makes you lose your mind. That's why you must be able to see. A psychologist who should be able to help you. And then through this, you should be able to deal with the issues in your soul. And these issues in your soul can also be addressed through other therapies which we call psychotherapy. Psychotherapy has social therapies under it here. We have the cognitive, something to do with the way you think. You need the therapies of psychodynamic, something to do with how uh, those issues, the unresolved conflicts in your life. Because when I'm showing you that now, there are some things you say you cannot talk to anybody because it makes you emotional. To deal with these issues. Number two, we have the medications. That's why anybody who has depression is given antidepressant to manage the depression, to manage the symptoms of the person, and the different other conditions. So you need to examine, you need to don't self-medicate. I know because we are now having these WhatsApps, we have these smartphones, sometimes we Google, Google, ask, uh, I have this condition, then Google tells you. No. See. A psychiatrist. Let them examine and know what are you struggling with. Treatment is there, you can recover. I'm one of those. <coughs> Number three. She said she's a reverend. And uh, I want to uh, align with her a bit. Psalms, 9, Psalms 42. In verse 3, the Bible says, my, so, uh, my tears have been my food day and night. When men continually ask, where is your God? That is because of your problems. You are crying because of your problems, right? Now, issues of the spirit must be dealt with the spirit. That's why you need the spiritual angle. You need prayer. So, please, let her lay hands on you. Please, come for prayer. <laughs> <laughs> because... <clears throat> Even in Mark chapter 5, the madman, <coughs> you remember that story? A madman who was cutting himself? Yes. When he met Jesus, what happened? <coughs> he was made whole. Legion was a spirit, right? It was a spirit. Evil spirit. Yeah? Uh-huh. So please, do you know why sometimes you don't want to fornicate? Sorry, now at your age you are, you are fornicators. You don't want to commit adultery, but sometimes you, there is a push that makes you feel like you must do something. Do, that's the spirit push. <laughs> you need deliverance. Today is a Friday, but some men, their Fridays are always down. Because of uh, issues here. Please need deliverance. So, but help is available. That's what I'm trying to say. I want to say this. On 14th of May 2024, I will organize a mental health awareness for which Dr. Raymond Otokonyero, he is traveled from here. He is the lecturer for psychiatry in Macquarie University. He is the keynote speaker. Apart from him, four people with lived experiences. One is engineer Begumisa, he now he was working with UNRA, he resigned from UNRA, he began his own organization and UNRA contracts him to work for UNRA. He's an engineer now. But he had a mental breakdown, he was in Futatika twice. But after Futatika he went back to school, went to Makerere, he finished, he's an engineer now. But our problem here is we have people with mental health problems, we give up. But I think all of us need help. Why that is happening, please forgive yourself and forgive others. Because lack of forgiveness is even what is making you not to sleep. That's why every time you remember those who hurt you badly, your chest pains as if there's no tomorrow. Forgive them. Even today, if you forgive them today, even today, the way you will sleep, you will thank me later. <laughs> forgive yourself. We all make mistakes, we all make errors. I want to say this, please mind your language. 
Why? What, where you are today is because of what you spoke to yourself. If you can just uh, have a flashback on what you used to say about yourself when you grow up. Um, it is like that even where you are today, it is because of what you used to say. And it has come to pass. The kind of person you have married, the place where you are, whatever you are doing, it is all because of what you say. That's why when you say no, it is a no. Do you know some people who are here, maybe they have said, I will never marry again, and they have never remarried because they said it. <laughs> Yet there are some good men who, have, who even have been coming around, but because they said they will never marry again. Huh. Please mind what you say. Mind your association. Why? The people you associate with the most will demand participation from you. So, check. That's why you are the average of the five people you spend most of your time with. Who are those five people you are mostly with? You are the average of the five. If one is a drunkard, you also drink. If one goes to church, if the reverend, you also, you also escort her to the church. Once a while. If one is a businessman, you have also begun some business with them. So you are the average of the five people you are always with. So who are these five? Are they helping you to grow? Or they are like, ah, if you are you, I would have done the FCD. Then they is leading. A whole honorable speaker. Improve yourself with the self-help books and the courses. Please, Madam said it here. It is an abomination. If these five years you have not read any other books, you have not attended any other trainings, and you have not even done any short course. And the beautiful thing is some of these courses are online, you can do them. Even weekend programs, you can do them. Please improve yourself. It is a taboo. It is an abomination for a counselor to come and then he doesn't know anything. And then yet the people he is chairing, they know more than you. It's an abomination. You don't even know command respect. But when they see that you are sharp, you have ideas, you bring points, and oh, our speaker is there. But you are improving yourself. Improve yourself. Please, I beg. I beg. Improve yourself. And improving yourself here means a lot. You begin to improve yourself from your mind. And then it goes down. So that when you go to the council meeting, like uh, the way our channel was saying, you go there as the speaker. You appear as the same speaker too. Speakers arrive. But then when you just show up for the sake of showing up, they will even say, ah, anyway. <laughs> improve yourself, friends, improve. Yeah? Improve yourself. I want to say this, I want to end with this. Live a balanced life. We must balance our lives, friends. Because an unbalanced life will not make you go anywhere, it will not make you frustrated. How do I mean with a balanced life? I, at least we have bicycles, so I will draw a tire. <laughs> so here, yeah, the, the wheel is here. Wheel of light is what I want to end with. I think this wheel will move very well, right? With the spokes well aligned, I'm sure this tire will move. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sure this one will move either motorcycle or what. Now I want to ask ourselves honest questions. In our will of life, let's begin with your spiritual life because you are the result of your spiritual being. Yes. So, let's begin with the spiritual. Now, you come to finance. Now you come to. Let me first put the father here. Let's have family here. Let's have career. In as much as you could have joined as a counselor, I don't think that is your ambition to remain there. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe there's even a hope for you to become the honorable MP. 
So career we talk about it. Yeah. Your physical fitness matters. Yeah. Of course there must be need for personal development. So that when you look back after five years of your work, then you can say, yeah, I was the speaker. What it shows? There must be personal development. Yes, sir. If you join the politics or you join the council when you are sleeping on a three by six bed, and then you 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 leave when it's only three by six, it is an abomination. <laughs> At least there must be a growth now. At least go to six by five by six, if not six by six. If you have been on a, on a payot, at least there should be an improved house. Personal development. We should be able to see some personal growth. Yeah. Now let's give ourselves a max. Spiritual, how are we? <laughs> Out of ten, what can we tell ourselves? Hmm? Out of ten. Six. Six. We are trying. At least we pray. Uh, we pray. Even today, some people left uh, good sources which are meat. <laughs> yeah, we are trying. We are praying. We are fasting. We are. Uh, six is not bad. <laughs> So six is around here, right? Finance. What can we give ourselves? Out of out of ten, what can we give ourselves on finance? Two. <coughs> fun. Do we go for fun? Fun. What can we give ourselves for fun? <coughs> At least we, we go for fun. Yes. How do I know? When Fali, uh, not Fali Pupa. Yes. Yeah, Fali Pupa, yes. yes. When Fali Pupa came to Arua, the stadium was packed to capacity and it was 50,000. People paid and the pitch was enough. Yes. Green light. Ooh, Abba, that, our new parka was packed. <coughs> no space. People have fun. Yes. Uh, at least we can uh, reduce our bit at least by two or one. <laughs> because we love fun, no? Yeah. Though we are broke. <laughs> How are things in our marriages in the family? <laughs> Normally, when I ask this question, I give the women to answer it because I know what is there. Because for us men, we pay that the things are okay. But things are not. What can we give ourselves in terms of, of our families? How are things happening? How are things? Seven. Families are okay? Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> Somebody says that. Okay, for those who are married. Average is six. Average is six. Somebody is saying four? It's four. Four. When a woman says four, I cannot argue because I know. <laughs> friends, do we have friends? Yes. What can we give ourselves? Nine. Eight. Nine. Eight. Eight. Nine. Okay. Friends take the day. <coughs> but we forget that after friends we go home. <laughs> On to go to a home which is a police post. <laughs> Career, how are things? Now, when I'm talking about career, are you also adding some papers <coughs> on what you already have as you build your career? <coughs> some. <coughs> on average, what can we give ourselves? Two, five, three. Okay, two, five, three. And then we get the average. What do we get? <laughs> Physical, are we fit? <laughs> oh, some of us are really on support machines. <laughs> are we physical fit? Yeah. On average, what can we give ourselves? Six. 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 One complaint is Six. your health. <laughs> Personal development. 
When you look back, what do you see? Do you see that you have grown or you're asking yourself, God, why? <laughs> Are you about to retire and then you have nothing to, to even retire to? You have nothing in your name. <laughs> and then you are frustrated. At least, what do we give? Somebody saying, at least, yes. Oh, at least, four. Five. 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 At least, six. Eh? Yeah. At least. Yes. But I want to say this. I want to say this. Please, when you leave this place, first go back home and do your own audit. Because if you don't do your audit, nothing happens. Because you cannot do what you don't know. You only do what you know. Let's join our books. <laughs> Can this machine move? <laughs> Can this machine move? <laughs> Please, I want to challenge each one of us for you. Let's purpose to live a balanced life. The question I will, I will then leave with you is, what can you do to at least live, to improve where things are really bad? Because now I see there are three things which are bad. Number one, finance. Finance. Finance is a huge issue. Number two, family. Because after here you must go back to your family. But then if family is a police post, running around will not help you hold the bull by your own. I want, normally when I, I teach about stress management, I don't tell you to go and dance, I don't tell you to go out for, for, with the friends and all that. Because at the end of going out, where do you go back? You go home. In fact, your spouse is your number one stressor. <coughs> Why? They do the opposite of what you want them to do. Because you want them to be in your own image and in your own likeness. You want them to be to do the things that you want them to do. You forget that they actually your exact opposite. That's why if you are here and you love spending money, your spouse loves saving money. If you're here, you want you love saving, for them they want to spend, and when they handle your money, they will spend it. It frustrates. They're your opposite. Understand yourself, understand them. Deal with it. Some of us, we married, and then when we, we became counselors, then we said, now I want to marry for my status. Yes. That doesn't work that way. That doesn't work. We improve the status of one spouse. <laughs> yes, so, let me tell you this, friends, counselors, speakers who are here, clerks to counsel, let me tell you this. The shaking of your bed determines the peace in your house. <laughs> the frequency of the shaking determines how peaceful your house is. And for the shaking to happen, it takes two people to shake the bed. Otherwise, somebody will say, when you are finished, you cover, there will be no shaking. <laughs> <laughs> and your peace in your bedroom is directly proportional to how you are going to perform at your place of work. I've learned from experience, so I know. Let me just say, oh, there's a hand on our platform. Mm. Our seat comes on platform. Mm. I said, it is a new year dawn, a new year beckons, signaling us to conduct three important audits in our lives. What, you? what have we done thus far? Mm. What are our obstacles? Mm. And what are we doing to go past those obstacles mm. and meet the glory of success? Mm -hmm. Some uh, honorable councillors made this comment, Madam Speaker, really, if I go backwards, I think I, uh, I have not done it to the expectations. Mm. To my thank you. We must audit our lives. Let me tell you something here. You might think that the things at home are very hard and then you want to go for the cheap labor. It is more expensive <laughs> when you go for the cheap labor outside. The men over here will understand. The city they were talking about. In our city, uh, 
the price of beer is uh, between four to two times uh, four thousand. That means each day the speaker is going uh, with eight thousand on booze, right? And this is without buying for the friends, and this is without the nyamachoma. This is only the two bottles. Help me multiply eight thousand by three hundred and sixty-five. Without friends. This is without friends. This is without the big days. This is without Christmas, Easter, Independence, other days without buying for their friends, and this weekend without the transport money sometimes we give. When I'm talking about financial literacy, when I'm, do, I'm doing trainings on financial literacy, the Lord Father comes here, all of his stock balances is zero. For three and a half years. Even when someone has a bill, I take it to 665, all of his stock balance is zero. For three and a half years, this is how life has been for me. So please, you. don't you, yes, <laughs> this is my financial statement. <laughs> When I am talking financial literacy, when I'm training, I'm training from a place of experience because I've been there. I know when, now I understand the difference between actual available balance and actual balance in the bank. I know the difference. I know how I've been there. I know. I know it. Don't you dare take loan to pay fees because that money is not going to give you returns. That can help you to... It's a mess. <laughs> if you know, you know. So I didn't want to go there, but I just want, I've just brought for you this. This is for another training altogether. That's why when we're doing financial literacy trainings, <laughs> we know what we're talking about because of debts and financial crisis. And because of that, even now here, the man has jumped. That's why Jesus said something. Jesus said the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that is in another context, but we can still apply it here. The eight heart breaks, finally I'm here, Marjorie man, the story is here. Before when I was born, I was rejected already <coughs> by the people who were before there, by that time. So I was born in the church and then lived through it. So I know what it means to be rejected and abandoned. And then, of course, my journey will be precious. All of these are available books. But each of them is at 50. I, don't, I, didn't, want, I didn't want to talk about it here now. <laughs> then, last thing. Thank you. That has been electric. <laughs> Not so. Thank you very much, Daniel. Triple D, Daniel, remember, Ratibi.